I think we are ready to begin. Mm -hmm. So the next speaker this morning is Xin Wan from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and he's going to talk about Iwasome in conjecture for universal families. Okay, thank you very much for uh, for the invitation. Uh, it's my pleasure to to give talk in this um, ICTS conference. Uh, today I'm going um, to talk about the U.S. Salman conjecture uh, over the universal family of um, Tiadi Kalana's program. Um, this is John's work with Oliver 4K. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's, sorry, one second. It seems this more away. Okay, so just one second. Um, so one of the central problems in number theory uh, is the relation between the analytic objects, for example, the, uh, most notably the spatial values of L functions, and the uh, uh, arithmetic objects, for example, the class group of um, uh, number fields or summer groups. Um, the examples um, also include this um, BSD conjecture um, for, um, uh, for deeper curves. Um, so in fact, there is a general philosophy which is explicitly formulated by Block and Cotto, uh, I think in 1994, um, who give this uh, formulation of the Tamagawa number conjecture, which gives a, a precise relation between L functions and the, um, the arithmetically uh, defined. So, so, sorry, yeah. uh, block Cato is maybe 1988. 1998? Okay. Um, oh, oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I maybe I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, that's probably I, uh, this 1998, but, but uh, I, 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 yeah, but it seems somewhere I saw it. The, the, but I, I, I can double check afterwards. The, yeah, the, 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 the paper on this um, Tamagawa number conjecture in this book, uh, in um, Godendic book, um, that, that may be. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, it gives the precise relation between the L functions, um, uh, 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 special values of L functions and the, the size of the arithmetically defined several groups. Um, sorry. I, I'm not sure why why this always stuck. Okay, so so in this talk we we focus on the modular forms of a Q. In other words, the elliptic curves. Uh, uh, sorry, elliptic modular forms. Um, let's fix the setup. Uh, let's fix um, P to be in an odd prime, um, and uh, let's fix the uh, uh, cosmic eigenform f of even weight k and trivial character on level n. Um, well, the, we can write out write out the Q expansion of the, the, the eigenform. Uh, F equals the um, so 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 we normal it's normalized so that the first uh, Q expansion coefficient is equal to one, and uh, also uh, it's well known that um, there is a um, Galois representation associated to this modular form, which we denote as rho F. Um, this is uh, a representation of the absolute Galois group GQ. Uh, into GL2 of OL, where this OL is the uh, co coefficient field, which is the finite extension of ZP. And uh, um, we also write uh, the TF to be the representation space. And um, we also write VF uh, to be the uh, Galois representation with the uh, field coefficient, namely we tensor this TF uh, with QP. And, uh, uh, we also uh, suppose the residue representation rho fr is absolutely irreducible. So under this assumption, um, this uh, model p Galois representation is um, kind of uh, uh, uniquely determined up to, uh, is uniquely determined because the, the choice of the lattice uh, is basically only up to a scalar. So, so the residue representation is basically a fixed representation. Okay. Um, Okay, and, and to do Iwasawa theory, uh, we have to um, uh, look at the uh, sacratomic uh, tower of field extension, Q which we denote as Q infinity over Q, so that the uh, Galois group of uh, Q infinity over Q is isomorphic to ZP. So this uh, uh, field extension is obtained by joining all the P power roots of unity of into Q, and then you take, um, uh, a sub, a sub extension so that the representation is isomorphic to ZP. Uh, we denote this Galois group as gamma, and we also define the Iwasawa algebra to be the completed group algebra of gamma um, um, with OL coefficient. Um, now we uh, define the main arithmetic object that we want to study, uh, namely the, the so-called strict summer group following Cuttle. Um, 
So on the arithmetic side, we define the strict Salmon group as follows. We, we first uh, form this um, global Galois. So let's take this Q and to be an intermediate field extension between Q and Q infinity. And we consider the first degree uh, global Galois, Galois cohomology with coefficient to be uh, VF over TF uh, tensor with minus K minus two over two. So here, let me uh, briefly um, explain a little bit. So this VF over TF, this, uh, the, so this is the p-divisible coefficient of Galois representation. And uh, uh, we tensor it back by K minus two over two to make it uh, correspond to the central, central L value. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, this uh, is an um, uh, important point uh, for our approach to work. We need to uh, have this periodic family to pass through a point corresponding to the central L value. Um, for example, if this width is k is equal to two, then this twisting is just zero. So we just obtain this scalar representation associated to this width two modular form. And uh, uh, we also require it to be uh, the certain part of this global Galois cohomology group by putting uh, a handful of uh, local uh, conditions. Basically, at primes outside p, uh, we want to um, require those classes to whose localization lives in the so-called H1F, namely the finite part of, part of the local Galois cohomology group. So basically for uh, V prime to P, this is defined by, so, so you first define this um, uh, uh, H1F for, with coefficient for VF twisted by this number um, by, re, by putting the, this unramified the local condition and then you propagate into this uh, VF over TF coefficient. Basically it's just the image of this uh, H1F for VF. Uh, for, for the periodic place, we require the localization to be trivial. So that's, that's, that, that's why we define, why we call it the strict summer group. So I mean that the periodic localization uh, is strictly zero. So that's, that's a part of this cohomology um, group, which we call the strict uh, summer group over QA, QN. Okay, and then we, also, we can also define the summer group over Q infinity to, um, to, to be the direct uh, limit of this summer, strict summer group over QN, uh, where this transition map is given by um, restriction map. And uh, then we define this uh, dual, the so-called dual summer group, which we denote as X Q infinity strict to be the Pontryagin dual of the summer group, strict summer group of Q infinity. Basically the Pontryagin dual means you take this continuous, um, uh, the, 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 the space of continuous homomorphisms from a space to QP over ZP. Um, so uh, it's, it's known that uh, this uh, dual, this dual summer group is finitely, finitely generated the lambda module. Basically, uh, every every module over Q infinity is equipped with an, with an action of gamma, um, which is the Gauss group of Q infinity over Q. So, so uh, each module is a module. Uh, so each module is just module over lambda, and it's known that it's finitely generated. Okay, that's the arithmetic side. And now let's turn to the analytic side. And for this purpose, we uh, first fix the finite set of bad primes um, sigma, including p. So basically, the sigma consists of p and also of the primes where, um, where this f is, is ramified. Um, and uh, on the analytic side, we first define the so-called Iwasawa cohomology by taking the projective limit of this global Galois cohomology group of q and uh, sigma uh, with coefficient to be TF uh, twisted by this uh, minus K minus two over two. Um, Kato proved that uh, this module is a torsion free module of rank one over lambda. And uh, Kato also constructed a zeta element, uh, which we denote as Z Kato, to be an element in H1 Iwasawa of Q infinity uh, sigma. Um, so, so, so Q infinity sigma means the, the Galois group of this maximal uh, Galois, uh, Galois extension of Q, uh, of Q infinity, which is unramified outside sigma, okay, um, with T, TF coefficient. And uh, so, so why Kato 
called it zeta element that's because it's related to spatial values of L functions or cutoff unit called zeta functions under this block cutoff due exponential map. Um, where here for this L value of F twisted by um, the characters chi, where, where this chi runs over uh, characters of this scholar group gamma. So basically this is, um, although it looks like, it looks uh, algebraic, thing, but actually it uh, incorporates uh, analytic information. So it's an analytic object. Um, so now we are ready to um, to formulate this USR main conjecture by Kato, um, which says that, uh, so the first part says that the, the strict, the strict dual strict summer group over Q infinity is a torsion module of lambda. Okay, and now if it's a torsion module um, over lambda, then we can, uh, Define the so called characteristic ideal or characteristic polynomial of it. That's the standard uh, terminology in Iwasawa theory. Um, but moreover, uh, Kato's uh, um, Iwasawa main conjecture says that uh, the, the characteristic uh, ideal of this uh, X strict Q infinity uh, is equal to the characteristic ideal as lambda module of this. Uh, um, above defined the Iwasawa cohomology module H1 Iwa over the uh, lambda module generated by Kato's data element. Uh, of course, the, the, okay. Um, so, so, this, this is, um, so this formulation uh, that uh, from the appearance, it doesn't evolve, is, is a little different from this classical um, Iwasawa main conjecture um, with, uh, with periodic L functions, which was a lot earlier than, than uh, this Kato's work. Uh, but in fact, for example, if F is ordinary at P, then one can prove that this Kato's formulation of the USR main conjecture is actually equivalent to the classical formulation, formulation which says that uh, the, uh, the, the periodic L function, which interpolates the uh, uh, spatial value of uh, the L function for F twisted by characters of gamma, uh, is equal to the characteristic ideal of the block cutoff dual summer group. So here, here is more classical. It's not uh, cutoff strict summer um, group. It's the block cutoff dual summer condition. But uh, I should also remark that this um, this kind of formulation is only uh, okay uh, in the ordinary case. In the gen in, in fact, in general, the formulation uh, using periodic all function is uh, much more uh, complicated. But um, but the, the formulation, Kato's formulation is kind of uniform, it's independent of this uh, 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 ramification type at P of F. So it's, it's always of this form use, using this zeta element. Okay. Maybe to have integral version, is there some assumption on the Galois image? Right, um, right uh, well, uh, so so yes. Uh, so basically it, the, the, the Kato, so I think, I think the, um, for the proof, you need to, um, you have, so we already re, uh, required this residue representation to be irreducible. And the Kato actually proved this the integral version under the assumption that the, um, the, the, there is a, a, in the image, there is a, a mod P unipotent uh, element. So, uh, so combined with these two assumptions, the, the irreducibility, mod P irreducibility and the, uh, having a mod P unipotent element is enough to get this, uh, uh, is not to 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 have this cutoff in result in, in integrally, um, but uh, if if there is if there's no such assumption, then then still uh, one can formulate us uh, the us main conjecture is expected to, to to be true as a module over lambda tensor with QP, but the integrality uh, issue becomes rather um, becomes rather complicated. Uh, it's um, for example the the Eisenstein case the the choice of lattice really matters. Uh, it, it affects the mu invariant issue. So, so it's it, so so without this this assumption of this image, then then this form yeah the, 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 this is rather com complicated. But 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 later on you will see that I I mean so so in this talk I always um, put put all those two assumptions always to to make this uh, integral um, version of this main conjecture. Okay. Um, Um, okay, so so in fact, I, I would say that uh, what what Kato did in his paper is that he constructed a canonical map 
uh, from VF uh, plus minus. So here VF is the uh, gamma representation associated to F and the plus minus means, so, so basically you have this complex conjugation inside the absolute gamma group for Q. And uh, it acts on VF and because VF is an odd, is an odd gamma representation. So, so, so the plus, so for this complex, so the plus minus one eigenspace for this complex conjugation, so each has a uh, dimension one. So we denote each uh, eigenspace to be VF plus minus. So basically Kato constructed the canonical map for, from uh, VF plus minus into H1 Iwasawa uh, of this global, global Galois cohomology group uh, on Q infinity sigma with uh, VF coefficient. So, so here, um, so VF, so, so, so the advantage is that it, the, so in this way, the Kato's Iwasawa main conjecture is independent of the choice of lattice because as I mentioned earlier, under our assumption, this uh, uh, choice of the lattice is unique up to a scalar. And if you uh, choose the, if you um, multiply the lattice by a certain scalar, uh, you, this, uh, each, each, so the each, so, so, so the, the numerator and denominator, each, um, like like uh, um, is multiplied by the same number, so so the left hand side is unchanged. So so this formulation does not depend on this um, choice of the lattice, and, and also Kato also proved the one side divisibility, uh, namely the upper bound for the Samer group, by constructing an Euler system of zeta element under certain assumptions. Uh, so so basically, um, so that's assumptions that just what what I should just ask that we. Um, basically, the big image assumption of the Gower representation. Okay, so now uh, uh, we uh, start to discuss uh, the result, result that we have been able to prove. Uh, so our first result is to prove um, the other side of divisibility at good primes. Uh, so, so basically, we we, we first uh, so, so so this is a, this theorem is kind of an intermediate uh, step in our final main result. So basically, let's uh, first suppose P does not divide N. Recall that N is the conductor of, um, of F. So, so that means that this pi F automorphic, automorphic representation associated to F is unramified at P. And uh, we require that rho bar uh, restricted to uh, GQP as the local um, Galois representation, uh, local Galois group at P is absolutely irreducible and we also suppose that the image of row bar contains and uh, contains a unipotent element. This we just I just uh, mentioned before is the requirement one of the requirement by Kato. And uh, there is also additional um, there is also an additional uh, auxiliary requirement. We require that there is an L dividing n, so uh, this, 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 uh, where this L is not it doesn't is not equal to p such that. Um, the, the, the L component of the automorphic representation pi F is of the form of the Steinberg representation twisted by this, uh, a certain uh, unramified um, character where which sends the sends L to minus one times L to the K minus two over two. So, so this is a little bit strange, but let me uh, uh, elaborate a little bit. So if, for example, if K equals two, for example, uh, for elliptic curves, then that just means that the local the local locally this elliptic curve has a non-split multiplicative reduction. Uh, so under those two assumptions, then the Yuasawa conjecture is true. So 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 the second assumption is a little bit strange. Um, but um, uh, let me explain why I put this assumption because uh, that's because um uh, the uh, uh, along with the argument we we. I need a certain result of this vanishing of mu, um, of this vanishing of mu invariant, uh, mu invariant. and uh, th this is to ensure that we can uh, we can require that um, the uh, so 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 the, that that so so we need this vanishing of mu uh, for certain uh, L functions of f over over a certain quadratic imaginary field using this Wurzbacher formula, and. Uh, uh, I, I just uh, need that the, uh, well, so it's not quite a, yeah, it's a, some kind of, it's a what's pretty formula for some indefinite uh, indefinite quaternion algebra. And um, we need the results on this vanishing of mu uh, for that uh, kind of uh, central L value 
Um, uh, but uh, for technical reasons, I need to uh, require that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the associated indefinite quaternion algebra is just a, a GL2, uh, sorry, it's just a, a M2, the, the two by two um, matrix algebra. Mm. Um, Although I, although the, the we, we do have the, those results, for example, in a in a in a GL two case is uh, proved by Ming Lun Xie and uh, and in general is by Ashe Brongo, but um, but in general there is a pure comparison issue, um, which um, which we are unable to, uh, which we are uh, unable to deal with, um, so. Um, so, so, so there might be. So, if 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 there be, if if one can like overcome this obstacle about this periodic comparison for this modular form on uh, for the modular form on the modular curve and for mo for the modular form on the Shimura curve, then it should be uh, it, it should be we should be able to relax this assumption. But at this moment, um, uh, this is still a problem. So. But, but anyway, we just need to uh, assume there is there is one such prime. So this cannot can is not that a strong assumption. Okay, um. So the proof. Uh, so the uh, I uh, in this today's talk, I'm not gonna, gonna focus uh, much on this um, on this part because the proof um, can be summarized as a mixture of Eisenstein congruence argument and Euler system argument. Uh, more precisely, we first uh, proof this uh, a Greenberg type Iwasawa main conjecture for f twisted by an ordinary CM form of uh, higher weight. Um, uh, this uses uh, Eisenstein congruence on u on the unitary group u three one. Um, so basically, Eisenstein congruence means the uh, congruence between cusp forms and the Eisenstein series on this uh, rank four unitary group. Um, and uh, uh, next, we use the explicit reciprocity law for the spadins and flux element um, uh, studied by King's Loeffler and Zach Bess um, to relate the original USR main conjecture to the Greenberg type USR main conjecture um, we mentioned above. Um, so basically, the spadins and flux element is um, uh, is, uh, is for ranking Selberg motifs. It's, uh, it's like a special cycle for uh, for ranking Selberg motif. And uh, so then we, we we can the explicit reciprocity law uh, can relate the spadins and flux element to uh, to both L functions. Uh, one, one is the Greenberg, the, the one appearing in this Greenberg type U S man conjecture, and the other is the uh, L function uh, we start uh, we study. So it's basically, it's a F twisted by an ordinary CM form so of, of higher weight under the F twisted by CM form of our lower weight. So we can relate the spadins and flux element to both uh, to each of them. And so it is kind of uh, building a bridge between them too, and we can um, we, we can prove this. So so basically, so earlier there's a work of Skinner Bang, uh, who did this um, ordinary case by using Eisenstein congruences on U two two. But uh, uh, if we want to do this on uh, non ordinary case, then then if we work with U two two, then then this local this local theory is um, not good enough to deduce the U.S. Solomon conjecture, but uh, for U three one, the good thing is uh, um, this the, this theory of periodic family in the setting is just a Hida theory. Um, we don't need any like common theory uh, or like that. So so it's Hida theory, uh, which and that makes this uh, Galois theoretic argument just the sim uh, completely this, um, similar to the ordinary case. So that's the advantage of working with U31 and go the, this way around to get this. But but this um, technique has a disadvantage in that um, it does not generalize to cases allowing ramification at P. So, um, so basically, when I ask this question, so what can we do if P divides N, especially when P squared divide, divides N? So, so for example, in some cases, this uh, local uh, automorphic representation, pi LFP may be super cuspidal in this case. And so, so we are unable to apply any like this Kuhlman family finite slope deformation of it. So basically it's uh, like kind of slope zero, so it does not de deform well in Kuhlman families. And then on the other hand, the local USR theory uh, seems to be too difficult to study in this ramified cases. And uh, 
Um, so our so in this talk uh, we're going to introduce an, uh, another way to study this uh, mm, uh, this question. Uh, namely, uh, we want to study the USR theory uh, along the universal family used in this local global compatibility in periodic lines. So this is uh, uh, so this is uh, established in a paper of uh, in actually an unpublished work uh, paper of Emerton, and it also uses um, uh, also this uh, this whole uh, work, this whole area involves uh, work of many people, uh, including like, like Keith Markison, uh, Pierre Comes, and um, many other um, Pascunas and many other people. So, so a, a good thing for this universal family is that it um, basically contains every classical modular form within it. So it incorporates uh, pretty much everything. Um, so it's a it's a larger family than than this uh, common family or Hida family. Um, so actually one, one dim the dimension is larger than, than those. So, so it uh, also in, in, incorporates all, uh, all the, the modular form where this pi FP um, uh, ram, ram, ram is ramified. Uh, so in fact, um, so, so let's, let's first uh, briefly uh, discuss this periodic uh, long lines and local global compatibility. Uh, so for any Galois representation, rho P, um, which is a Gaur representation of the absolute Gaur group of G, QP into GL2 OL. This OL is the coefficient uh, ring. And there is an associated periodic Banach uh, representation, uh, which we denote as pi rho P over OL. OL. So more generally, um, for in fact, not only just uh, this OL, if, more generally for a general coefficient ring R, in application, we usually uh, use the, the universal de color deformation ring or some or some certain universal Hick algebra. Uh, and uh, suppose we have this uh, uh, color representation of GQP into GL2R, then uh, we can construct a, also construct a Banach, uh, a Banach um, representation um, pi rho P uh, over R. Um, so this is, uh, uh, this theory is uh, um, constructed by uh, Comes. Um, he used the, the, the theory of phi gamma modules. Basically, Comes constructed a magic functor uh, so to, to, to directly construct from this, so, so to read off, um, to, to, to basically construct the Banach representation by hand, which is a periodic completion uh, of this automorphic representation pi FP under this classical Langlands correspondence. A local lines correspondence. So it's kind of periodic combination of uh, of periodic lines, uh, classical periodic lines. Uh, sorry, classical lines, local lines correspondence. But uh, the 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 key thing is uh, the choice of the norm. So if you have, uh, so so you you have different ways to choose this uh, norm on this uh, local lines correspondence to make the completion. Okay. So so on the other hand. Uh, Emerton also defined the uh, completed cohomology on the modular curve uh, with general coefficient a, let's say. So let's uh, first fix the level group uh, we denote as kp, k upper p, k lower p, which is the uh, compact subgroup of GL2 z, z hat. And we define uh, this um, uh, completed cohomology as follows. We first uh, fix this uh, k upper p, which means the prime to p level group. And we define the a coefficient uh, cohomology to be this. So here I, I only write it in briefly. So, so this H1 means this H1 for this modular curve, uh, from the modular curve of this um, level group K. So, so we take this uh, direct limit uh, running over so to take this uh, P part of level group to run over all the uh, subgroup of, of GL2 uh, ZP and uh, with uh, a coefficient. So it, then we take this a to be the torsion coefficient to be this O over uh, this var pi to the S power. So basically this var pi is the uniformizer of this uh, uh, this uh, discrete evaluation ring uh, O. And we take this quotient, uh, we, we take this, co uh, this co quotient to be this, um, um, and to be this, uh, to be the co torsion coefficient. And, uh, and we, we take this, um, Larger and larger powers of s of uh, var pi. And in other words, we take this uh, project limit uh, for for the s uh, 
getting larger and larger, and we take this completion um, of this H1 K upper pair. Hmm. Uh, so, so if we take this completion, uh, and then um, uh, uh, this this is the the the, the Hamilton's uh, uh, complete cohomology with the the prime two p level group K p, and uh, Hamilton also um, 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 allowed this K upper p to take this smaller smaller level group and take another limit, and then there is a um, so 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 here here we here is the so called local global compatibility. So so basically, uh, we fix the uh, row bar, which is the model peak representation of GQ, uh, which is odd. So so I, I so here I I I, I have been skate I have been uh, sloppy. I, uh, so basically, we should uh, require it to be an odd representation, uh, making it a modular. So let that row be its universal deformation ring over the um, um, so so let R to be the universal deformation ring and the row to be the associated the universal um, Galois representation. We fix a finite set sigma of places outside P, and we and we suppose this uh, L part of this K upper P to be the maximal um, level group for L outside sigma. So so we allow the, the we allow a finite set of bad primes. Then uh, we have a uh, um, GQ G sigma GL two QP equivalent uh, isomorphism. So here G sigma is the product of GL two QL for L in um, running over um, uh, sigma, and uh, this we, we we consider the complete group cohomology. So basically, we we allow this um, we, we, as we have defined it before, but we we allow this k upper p to to be to run over all uh, level groups of um, uh, GL two ZL. So that's what I mean by this H H one hat or row bar sigma. This is isomorphic to row uh, tensored with Pi P rho rho dual um, of G uh, QP tensor with pi sigma rho. So this completed the tensor product. Um, so I, let me explain the notation. So, so pi sigma um, rho is the local Lanlands correspondence uh, of rho at places in sigma. So this is uh, uh, constructed by Emerton Helm. So this is the, you have this local Lanlands correspondence at L adic places is, is for L not equal to P. And you can the uh, Emerton Helm constructed and um, established a theory of uh, this kind of local Lanlands correspondence in families. So, and uh, this pi sigma rho is the uh, local Lanlands uh, they constructed. And then the rho is the Galois representation, universal Galois representation. And, uh, and the rho pi, pi p uh, rho dual. So rho dual is the dual Galois representation of rho. And we restrict it you know, to GQP as a local Galois representation. And pi, pi p is the uh, Banachow representation where right? we have mentioned it before that um, that's the the periodic uh, Kumas periodic local periodic long lines correspondence for this row dual of GQP. Um, okay, so that's the local global compatibility. Um, so the following uh, theorem is proved by uh, Nakamura. Um, so um, so the theorem he proved the, this theorem. Uh, so let p be at least a three and. Uh, Suppose this row bar uh, restricted to to, to um, QZP. ZP is the piece power. Uh, sorry, piece root of unity. So it's absolutely irreducible. In fact, we just need to row bar to be absolutely absolutely irreducible under this G the Gauss group of this quadratic uh, sub extension of G zeta P. So that's a standard assumption in the, this modular modularity lifting and periodic Lanlands uh, uh, theory. Uh, we fix the uh, finite set sigma of primes containing all devices of M. N prime to P. And I also supp suppose that the semi simplification of uh, row F um, bar as a GQP representation is not of the form diagonal omega one. So omega, omega is a tetramolar character. Uh, so this diagonal omega one twisted by our character. And also assume that this endomorphism ring uh, row bar as a GQP representation is one dimensional. Then there is a, a family of zeta element. So, so uh, which which uh, I call it Z sigma n and to be a map um, interpolating this uh, uh, sigma in primitive version of Cato zeta element uh, Euler system uh, at each classical point in, in this 
spectrum RR is the universal deformation ring. So, so here, basically, you, you have in order to have an OLA system, you uh, well, um, you need to like uh, like like not so so previously in this Cato's uh, Salman context, it's like level one uh, element of the OLA system, but here you actually reconstructed this full OLA system, uh, whole OLA system, and. Uh, uh, here, my, the assumptions I put here is uh, slightly uh, weaker than uh, what Nakamura put in his paper, uh, but uh, uh, that's uh, uh, that's uh, I have discussed with uh, Nakamura uh, in person uh, because there, there are later uh, results of Pascunas. So, so basically, those assumptions are put uh, by uh, um, the, the, applying various results in periodic lines. Uh, but later on, there are results of Pascunas, which um, covers some cases, of, for example, p equals three, and some some cases. So, so here, the the assumptions I put here is uh, slightly weaker than um, Nakamura's an original preprint. Okay, um, so so I should also mention that uh, there is also a different approach by uh, Comes and Shaman Wang on this universal zeta element. Uh, which I'll, let me also um, briefly um, uh, 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 mention. So basically, they con they considered the arc uh, from zero to infinity regarded as the uh, element in the degree one homology group of the modular curve of level k. So this mo this is a modular symbol, and this modular symbol actually gives a functional from this completed cohomology to OL. And now um, we can apply this local global compatibility uh, factorization for this H1 hat as rho tensor with pi rho dual p tensor with pi sigma rho. Um, okay, so, so we get a, a functional on this tensor product space. Now, uh, for simplicity, uh, let's ignore the prime to p contribution pi sigma rho. I mean, to, I, to illustrate the idea, so this, this uh, modular symbol actually gives a map we denote as F zero infinity from rho to, to pi rho dual, the dual of pi rho dual. So, so, so basically uh, from any element of rho, we get a you know, function on this pi. So we get a, it in the dual space. And the following um, key results, uh, we have the following key results for this, um, by, by Kumis and Shamba Wang, and also uh, Ewan Zhou, who was a, was a student of Emerton, uh, did the same thing, but um, uh, he, uh, Joe, Joe's result is kind of partial, uh, but Kumis um, and Wang is the kind of a complete result. So, so if you, we denote it as F0 infinity to be the uh, functional, uh, to be functional uh, cons uh, constructed from this modular symbol, then they, they prove that this um, element is invariant under the action of uh, um, the diagonal matrix P1 as an element in GL2 QP. So, so, so what does it mean? So basically, um, so, so we have a, so a re representation, so let, let's go back to, so, so, so we have this row, row is a, uh, is a Banach representation of GL2, GL2 QP. And basically, uh, so, so this, this function is equipped with the action of GL2 QP. So basically the, the, the theorem of Thomas one uh, of Yuan Zhou, uh, says that the uh, this uh, functional is invariant under the element this diagonal element um, in this GL2 QP. And another theorem by Comes is that using his theory of periodic Lana's correspondence, that there is a canonical isomorphism of this uh, uh, fixed by p 1 part of the dual of pi rho dual is canonical isomorphic to this Iwasawa. Um, cohomology of QP infinity rho. So this is, so here, this uh, G, local USL cohomology group, namely we take this uh, project limit over uh, the, the extension is QPN of QP. So it's a local local thing. And so um, we, if we combine everything together, we see that this functional F zero infinity gives a canonical map from rho to um, H1 Iwasawa QP infinity rho. Uh, which we call it a ZM. So, so M stands for modular symbols. This, this is a zeta element of modular symbols. Um, actually, um, so if you still recall this Cato's formulation of the USLM conjecture, you will see that this is very similar to what Cato or what Nakamura uh, did uh, in this space. We basically constructed a canonical map from rho to H1 Iwasawa of rho. 
The only difference is that here, the right-hand side is a local Iwasao cohomology, while in, in Nakamura and in, uh, and in, in this um, uh, Kato, uh, it's the global uh, Iwasao cohomology group. The, here comes the, another result of, um, of uh, Kormes and Wang. Um, so, so a crucial result is that this Z, they prove that this ZM does come from a global USR cohomology, H1 USR Q infinity sigma of, uh, of rho. Uh, so basically their, their proof um, actually uses the Kato's construction. So it's not, so, 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 they, so they did use Kato's construction. So, the, it's, so it's not like they, they, they independently recover Kato, it's not, no. They, they have to like use Kato to prove that this ZM does come from global USR cohomology. And uh, another, uh, um, Fundamental result of Comes and Wang is that they prove the um, at classical points the ZM and the Z Kato are equal. So basically, it's not uh, it's not that not very hard to prove that they are equal up to a scalar. Basically, you and Joe also prove that they are equal up to a scalar. But uh, you need to know that scalar is a periodic unit is a rather um, complicated is rather difficult issue. And uh, actually, the argument of Comes and Wang to proving this is rather convoluted. Uh, I'm not gonna um, touch on this. Okay, let's go back to the proof of uh, or the formulation of the USR main conjecture over the universal family. So we hope to establish one side divisibility of the USR main conjecture um, over the universal family R uh, using this OLA system argument. Namely, we want to um, basically we want to uh, show that the index of the total zeta element is big, bigger than or equal to this uh, character risk ideal of this strict. Uh, similar group, but we want to work over R. So this is a, this is a, a very subtle issue. So, so if we want to work with families, you have to uh, work with a proper appropriate uh, context. So, so here the the language we use is the we use the fundamental lines. Um, so we, we will come back to the precise definition of fundamental lines uh, momentarily. So basically, it's a determinant uh, of the similar complex with the certain trivialization given by this uh, universal zeta element constructed by, mm, by Nakamura and by, uh, by Comis and Wang. So, so why, we, why we work with the uh, um, fundamental lines? So that's, that's because it has many uh, uh, advantages over um, the characteristic ideals or fitting ideals, which are uh, often uh, used in, in classical study of Iwasawa theory. Um, so, so basically, um, so first of all, uh, the fundamental line, so it commutes with arbitrary phase change. And uh, secondly, it, behave, it behaves well uh, with respect to changing the final set of primes sigma. And thirdly, uh, it's, a it's always a, gives you a principal fractional ideal by just by definition. And uh, so, so in fact, um, uh, it turns out that um, the, the upper bound for uh, so, so if you want to uh, study the upper bound for similar groups, um, then we can um, we can manage to reduce uh, it to the Euler system argument at each closed point, uh, provided the family is parameterized by a regular ring. But in general, we don't know. But um, if the um, family is parameterized by a regular ring, um, but uh, uh, if we if instead if we work with similar modules or um, maybe, for example, if we use the characteristic idea or fitting idea of several modules, then then the Euler system argument might be in trouble. It's, it's even, it even it even breaks it, it breaks down even for Hila families. Um, for the um, there's, there are some 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 issues um, you know, about this big big image assumption that that that's very hard to verify. But but if we work with fundamental lines. Um, then uh, so, so those those dif difficulties just magically um, uh, went out. Um, okay, so so we will first uh, uh, define the fundamental line. So let so let's uh, here are the typo. So so I should I should write. Uh, so this, let, let let's fix the coefficient ring a. Uh, so here I use, I wrote a lambda three. Uh, so lambda three is a three variable Iwasawa algebra. Um, so, so the so I should write a here. So I, it's a it's a typo, but later on I will explain why I work with lambda three. Okay. So, so Q. Let's let's write Q a to be the fraction field of the coefficient field a. So a is uh, some reduced ring. Um, 
we define a fundamental line to be, we take, we first take the um, several complex, uh, namely that we take this R gamma, the, this uh, uh, in this e derived category of the etal cohomology of Z um, with P inverted with row coefficient. And then we take the determinant of the, uh, of the several complex, and then we tensor it with the, so, so here we take the inverse of it. And then we, ten we ten tensor it with the de inverse of the de de determinant of the Agar representation rho minus one plus. So recall that rho, min rho minus one plus, rho, rho, so plus part is a rank one thing. So, so that's the uh, abstract definition. Then um, there is a, um, uh, there is an isomorphism or, or, uh, or we also call it trivialization induced by this zeta element. Um, we, we denote it as trivial, trivial which, which gives, if you, if you tensor it with the, uh, the, the fundamental, so lam, the lamina, the, the fundamental line is the module over, um, over A, over the frag, uh, over, over A, but uh, then uh, if we tensor it with the fraction field, then the trivial, the trivialization gives, so the, the zeta element, uh, the zeta morphism gives you a map, canonical map from it to, to this uh, coefficient field uh, of A. So, so basically uh, how it comes from, so basically, uh, uh, so if you tensor with the fraction field, then zeta morphism, be, be, so the, the mapping cone of the zeta morphism be, becomes acyclic. So, so from this uh, axiomatic uh, formulation of the determinant functor, so that induces an isomorphism on, on determinants from the trivial, trivial object. So that's how it comes from. So it basically comes from this abstract uh, formalism of, uh, of the determinant functor. So in some, uh, uh, so, so in fact, we, we prove some descending property of this the fundamental line on a non vanishing locus of the universal zeta element. So, so in, in fact, uh, over the universal family, it might be the case um, um, uh, that the, the, it may vanish, the zeta morphism may vanish at some locus, but but actually it's uh, non-vanishing generically. Um, so 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 uh, along this uh, non-vanishing locus, uh, we get that the, the zeta morphism is actually acyclic, so that we can get this um, trivialization morphism. So, and basically, um, so this descending property just says that the, this uh, fundamental line, so so um, together with the trivialization, it commutes with base arbitrary base change. Um, so this is a crucial property um, um, of this fundamental line um, that making uh, it uh, making us um, making it possible to to make the argument to, to work. Um, and also, it, it is interesting to uh, compare it uh, with the recent work of Chen Ho Kim, uh, Li, and uh, Paul Sinet. Uh, on the, um, um, they, they they prove this the uh, uh, that, that you can deduce. Uh, you, you can prove the equivalence of your Salman conjecture between uh, two congruent uh, modular forms under the assumption that the vanishing of mu invariant. Um, um, basically, uh, if we, uh, so that's also, uh, so that's that's, in, in, uh, that's uh, included in this uh, appendix of this paper of Nakamura. Um, so basically, um, if we unravel their argument, so uh, basically what they proved is that is, is exactly the descending property here um, at the point, uh, close to the point corresponding to the maximum idea of R. So basically if you look at the universal deformation ring, it has a unique, it's a local ring. So it has a, a unique close point corresponding to the maximum ideal. And uh, so basically what uh, they proved is that is exactly the descending property um, uh, of the, um, at the point, uh, this close to point. So basically, the reason why the, um, the, the so so so, the, but they, they assume they assume the vanishing of the mu invariant. Actually, it's, they assume uh, it's weaker than that. It's the vanishing of the mu invariant for the um, for the zeta element or uh, equivalent to, for this uh, uh, strict thermal group, group. But that's that's exactly means that uh, maximum in the case when the, the closer point is in the non-vanishing locus of the universal zeta element. So the non-vanishing of this so so. So basically, they just show that if the close point is the uh, is inside of the non-vanishing locus of the universal zeta element, then the descending property of the fundamental line is true. So it's, that's kind of a special case. But we, we actually we 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 prove this descending property for uh, for a general general point in this uh, non-vanishing locus of the universal zeta element. 
Um, but unfortunately, as we have said, we, um, we if we want to use this OLA system argument, uh, we still need to uh, that the uh, the the space the family is parameterized by a regular ring. But unfortunately, the universal definition ring R is a, in, in general not not a regular ring. Um, so that, that's that's a technical point because um, in, in this argument uh, we we have to um, to to like at least to assume that the universal uh, dif uh, sorry the, the parameter uh, space is uh, at least a unique factor uh, UFD um, but a regular ring is certainly a UFD um, but but thanks to the falling lemma so so we need to do some work to to like reduce to the regular ring thing. Um, uh, so, so we have we need the following lemma. Uh, we can construct a map from the lambda three, which is which is defined to be this uh, um, uh, OL, um, the three variable U S R algebra over OL. Um, we we have uh, embedding it into the universal deformation ring R, uh, which is a finite and flat morphism. Moreover, we can find a point in the spectrum of this lambda three, the three variable U S R algebra, such that. Uh, such that uh, at each point y in the spectrum of R, um, or I mean, in each point in the fiber on this point. Um, uh, so, so, so I, I, I forgot to write, it's a find a point x, is a point x in, in the spectrum, such that each, each point on the fiber on this x, the corresponding color representation is either crystalline with hot state weights in the fountain of phi, is crystalline in, with, with hot state weights in the fountain of phi range. So, so by, by fountain of fire range, I mean the weight k is uh, uh, less than or equal to p. So this this is a this is a result from this um, uh, modularity lifting work earlier. Uh, this um, uh, okay. This is just the commutative algebra uh, argument. And then uh, we can formulate the USR main conjecture uh, as follows: the, we we conjecture that the trivialization map over lambda three sends the uh, the fundamental line to the uh, integral lattice lambda three uh, inside the fraction um, uh, fraction field of lambda three. Okay, um, so so in fact, I should say that the fundamental line and the U.S. Hellman conjecture uh, can also be defined over R, the universal deformation ring, um, which also behaves well with specializations. It has nice uh, descending properties. However, uh, the argument proving the uh, the Euler system argument proving the upper bound for Selmer group. Uh, Requires that we work with this um, a regular coefficient ring. So, so, so we have to like do this to to like reduce to lambda three. So, in fact, so, so let me uh, explain what does it mean. So, so by by passing from R to lambda three, what do we get? Okay, here is a, uh, a intuitive explanation. So, in fact, by a result for Burns and the Flach, the fundamental line for a finite object is trivial. So that implies that. If we look at the U.S. Salomon conjecture, if we consider the U.S. Salomon conjecture over lambda three, and we specialize to a point x in the spectrum of lambda three, then the U.S. Salomon conjecture is nothing but the product of the U.S. Salomon conjecture uh, at uh, each point in the fiber of f, uh, x. So basically, you have this finite flat morphism from spectrum R to spectrum of lambda three. So then. Uh, if we the U.S. Salomon conjecture at a point x, x is equivalent to the product of the U.S. Salomon conjectures on, on all, all fibers of f, y. Of course, uh, as long as the fiber is eta over x, but sometimes there are double points we do not uh, touch those points. So, so as long as the fiber is eta over x, then it's just the uh, factorizes the U.S. Salomon conjecture at, at, all, at the classical points. So now uh, maybe you can see why why we do the previous lemma. So if we take that X, then each point on the fiber will correspond to a crystalline point of low weight. Uh, it's either ordinary or non-ordinary. But at those points, we, we can actually prove the, the U, corresponding U.S. Solomon conjecture by our first theorem and also by earlier result of Skinner or Bond. Actually, it's a slightly, slight generalization of Skinner or Bond so allowing general weight. Um, Okay, uh, so now we can combine the upper bound result by, uh, by OLA system over the family and the lower bound at the point X uh, we have chosen. 
uh, to prove this you are Solomon conjecture over the family. In other words, we have that the, the index of a uh, couple zeta element is bigger than or equal to the character's ideal of the strict summer group. Or more precisely, uh, we have this trivialization map uh, um, maps the fundamental line. Uh, the trivial, it contains the, the, lamb, the, the integral lattice lambda three. <coughs> um, this by Ola system argument. So here, this is by uh, Ola system argument, but uh, we, we use the language of fundamental lines to reduce it to Ola system argument on uh, a cl classical point. But here, the Ola system, we need a slightly, um, we are slightly, uh, slightly generalize this um, construction of Nakamura, uh, namely, um, we have to construct the complete, um, it's not, so Nakamura construct a sigma in, prim, in primitive uh, universal zeta element, but we need to construct a, a complete uh, zeta element, but over the universal com uh, irreducible components of the universal families. There, actually, there is no way to construct the, the universal complete zeta element uh, over the whole family. But, but so, so we have to like study carefully each irreducible component to look at the prime two P places what they are, what the local representations are varying. And so, so we, we, we can uh, define a level for this irreducible component, uh, which means that the level uh, the gen generic member in this irreducible component is of that level. But of course, there, there are maybe some, some uh, Zariski clo closed specializations uh, with, with lower level, but, but the level, uh, so I, I'm, by being a complete Z element, I mean, the level is the, 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 the level for the generic member of this irreducible uh, component. So that's the uh, upper bound. We, how about the lower bound? So in fact, we, we can prove the other side of the divisibility when specializing this uh, to a, a point X in spectrum of uh, our lambda three. Um, as we have said, the, the U.S. Alman conjecture at that point uh, is equivalent to the product of the U.S. Alman conjectures that uh, the fibers above this X. So, so in fact, we have crystalline points or ordinary points. Um, each, each cases are proved by either our first theorem or some generalization of Skinner bound. So actually we need a slight generalization of those results. Namely, we, we, we need to allow uh, some, some twist of the result by a certain quadratic ca character ramified at P. But, uh, but the proofs are just the straightforward uh, adapt, adaptions of uh, the arguments. So, so these results are provable. And, uh, so in fact, we can find um, uh, we, we can find this uh, we we can prove that we can always find this point. The, 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 this uses the Sarwit conjecture. Um, so so in fact, uh, this altogether imply the U.S. Alman conjecture for the universal family over uh, over lambda three. Uh, and uh, uh, so um, more precisely, we have the following theorem: suppose p is at least, at least a three. And f is cuspidal eigenform of even weight k and trivial character and level n. So suppose uh, rho f bar is absolutely irreducible. Uh, we assume that the semi simplification uh, of the residue representation in rho f bar as a GQP representation is not of the form diagonal omega one. So recall that omega is a tangible character uh, twisted by a, this diagonal omega one twisted by a character. We also assume that there is an um, element uh, is a prime l dividing n such that l does not divide p and such that uh, this uh, row bar um, as a color uh, representation over finite field, such that the IL the fixed part has dimension one and the GL fixed part has mm, dimension zero. So this corresponds, this is a, a residual um, assumption uh, corresponding to the, last, the second assumption, our first theorem. Under those assumptions, uh, we, uh, we, 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 the, the US object over the lambda three is true. Okay, so. So basically, we see that the first assumption means the row bar is absolutely reducible. And last assumption uh, ensures there is a, um, a mod p uh, unipotent element. So these two, so, so we have already included the assumptions by Cato on this big image of a Gaur representation. Okay, so now then we can specialize the family version uh, to classical points and uh, um, to get the USA non conjecture for uh, cusp forms allowing arbitrary ramification at P, including the super cusp case. So, more precisely, we have the, the theorem that if we suppose the, uh, the assumptions uh, uh, as before, and uh, um, so, so, we, so suppose rho bar satisfied the, uh, the assumptions in the previous theorem, then the Cato's USA non conjecture for F is true. 
So, so in fact, uh, specializing to classical points, we need a, it's not quite straightforward. We need a limit argument you know, by eta point of spectrum R over the spectrum of lambda free. Okay, and um, it also has the uh, consequences on the BSD conjectures. So we have this um, BSD formula when rank is zero at additive prime. So suppose P is an odd prime and E is an additive curve of Q whose associate way two cusp form F satisfies the assumption of our main theorem. Then if the analytic rank R of, uh, for E is zero, then the P part of the BSD conjecture for E is true. Uh, another theorem is that the assumptions um, uh, um, uh, uh, also still in the previous theorem, then we have this uh, uh, rank part of this um, um, block auto conjecture Namely, if the central error value of f is zero, then the Selmer group for rho f has positive rank. Um, we, uh, there are also some other uh, applications uh, on this uh, uh, Tamagawa number conjecture in the rank zero case in general. And also um, some, maybe there might be some applications for to um, USR theory for a weight one form, so art and representation for small p. Uh, but th those are still on other, uh, still in progress. And, uh, okay, um, that's the end of my talk. And thank you, thank you very, very much. Any questions or comments? Also from the online audience. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, sorry, that, uh, just to uh, double check, like the main conjecture is first proven at certain uh, crystalline points, uh, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned in the beginning, and, uh, and, and the limiting process, is, is it somehow explicit or? Oh, no, it's not, it's not like that. It's not that a limiting process. So the limiting process is a totally different thing. It's not by crystalline points. You, so, so I only need to uh, on finite, you, to know the you are at the finite set of uh, crystalline points. So basically I need, a, I, put, I take a point in the spectrum of lambda three and look at the fiber of the universal family above it. So it has a finite set of, uh, um, so the finite set of points. And it, it's, it's a, each, each point is an etal point. Uh, each point corresponds to a crystalline point. And we, we, as we can prove the U.S. Salman conjecture. So, so, so we can, then we can prove this uh, U.S. Salman conjecture at the, the one point X. So basically we have this uh, one set of divisibility, this cutoff set of divisibility over the whole family. And we, we, we also know the other side of divisibility at one point. And then this all together gives you the, the equality. That's basically the argument. So I don't, I don't, I don't uh, like take a limit argument of by crystalline points. That's not quite uh, what we mean. Any further questions or comments? If not, let's thank the speaker again.